so hi everyone and welcome for our new video about the tutorials so today what you're going to talk about is forecasting so it is chapter 4 in the principle of operation management sustainability and supply chain management book uh, by jay Ezra and barry render so what you're going to talk today is about forecasting but before going further with forecasting with calculation like with the previous videos i'd like first of all to, uh, to explain some theory and real world application about forecasting why do you guys need to know about forecasting and how is it applied in the real world so have you ever wondered why uh restaurant and fast food like mcdonald's burger king kfc chicken leek and even nando's most of the time they do not have leftovers in their kitchen after at the end of the day what happens especially in mcdonald's sometimes those ones that perform 24 7 most of the time you don't even see the suppliers when they come to give them i don't know uh the vegetables and everything that they need for their burgers but how come they never run out of whatever they are i mean the the input even burger king and all those people and and it's very rare to see them getting suppliers uh, having supplier come and provide them with all those things the answer to that question is forecasting so we call forecasting a process of predicting a future event in short what we do is like we know that last week in mcdonald brown fountain we sold let's say uh five thousand burgers so we assume that this week you're going to sell something that is approximately five thousand so they make a forecast but the forecast is not always perfect so it might be more than what you expected or it can even be less but now that's why we talk about forecasting error that's what i'm going to talk in the further in in, in the next slide but i mean in the coming slide but in short you need to know that this is how they make sure that whatever they are producing it not more than what they they forecast and all those things so let me give you an example about how the use of forecasting in business organization is important let's say there's this company x they are manufacturing smartphones so if they are manufacturing smartphone the forecast in the accounting department will be to know that this new product that you want to make how much is going to cost us what is the profit that you're going to get and how much money should we involve in the production of this product in short this is how the forecasting will be applied in this accounting these are the kind of question in this accounting department these are the kind of questions we need to to know uh, to ask ourselves if we need to produce something like that next in our human resource department let's say this phone here is to be manufactured next next year in january so far we need already we need to start working on it and we need people who are the kind of people that we we'll need let's say we need electrical engineers we need it specialists those people if we don't have them in our company we need to hire them for the new phone that is going to come so we need a specific project we need a specific how do you call it we need a specific plan to know that this is how our hiring activities will be this is how we're going to recruit people and this is how we're going to not only interview them but also to try to, uh, to train them so when it comes to the marketing department now we'll be thinking okay we need to make this product when we are done what is our target market how many people are we planning to reach and even if you're planning to reach those people how are we going to reach them are we going to to do our advert our adverts on the internet using facebook using those kind all those advert uh all those platforms and when it comes to operation this is where all of us fit most of the time we deal with schedule and he, sometimes we call uh, we call it project management so we say for example that we need to produce this phone here at the end of this month uh, or uh, uh, let's say we keep january 2018 this is what we want to produce now we need to have co uh, key activities we design which one are the activities that we need to do first and so on not only the scheduling part and product or project management we also need to know the capacity so we know that whatever we have our facility cannot hold more than i don't know 100 employees and we cannot produce more than 5,000 items so those are the kind of things that we need to know so that we can forecast when it comes to operation management and we, we, not only the the facility itself even the inventory that we know so we cannot an inventory that can only accommodate five thousand units 
but we produce 6,000, where is the rest going to be uh, kept? These are the kind of questions that we need to ask. So in short, forecasting is important because it helps you to see this is what I want to do and this is how I'll go for it. Next, these are the forecasting time horizon. In short, we have the first one, which is the short range forecast. Most of the time it goes from three months to one year and it's about purchasing or job scheduling a workforce level so most of the time this one it's, it's when for example when i buy a new product or when i uh we want to purchase a new product and when i schedule the job most of the time it's just something that is less than a year and secondly we have the medium range forecast now this one it varies from three months to three years let's say for example that we want to produce to make a new item most of the time, if Samsung want to want to manufacture a new phone, they'll they'll tell you even four months, even five, sometimes even a year before that they tell you that the new phone will be released next year. So these are the kind of medium range, a medium range forecast. And then finally, we have the long range forecast. This one, it's not something that we want to do now, or in a year, or in two years. Something that we want to do even in five, six years. It's a long term. Uh, we can say uh, forecast most of the time it applies when for example the company want to buy a new facility or they want to relocate you know that they wake up in the morning today and tomorrow they relocate no it takes time so you understand that according to what you want to achieve according to what you want to plan the forecast is going to change like right now you might be a student so your short range focus will be for you to pass only the test that you'll be writing soon and the medium one will be just for you to pass your, how do you call it? To pass from the first year to the second year. And the long range one is for you to graduate and to get a new job, I mean, to get a job. So you understand that according to what you want to achieve, the the range of the forecast is going to change. Now, these are the forecasting methods that we can use when we want to to uh, to approach, uh, the to solve, uh, to make a forecast in short. So first of all, we have the naive approach. This one, most of the time, it doesn't involve calculation. What we do is like we just assume that yesterday I sold 500 uh, units, so today I might also sell, I might also, uh, sell 500 units. Most of the time, this is what we do, especially even uh, those retailers that own Spaza Shop in, in, in our neighborhood. Well, this is what they do. They know that last week, I mean, last week I sold this amount, so probably this week I'm going to sell something that is around or approximately that same amount. So it doesn't involve calculation, it's just based on your experience and what you see. Now, we also have the moving average method. Now, this one, as it said, is just an average that we are, we, we, we are doing. If I want to make a forecast of the fourth day, what I need to do is like, I'm going to make, to take the average of my first day, third year, um, first day, second day, and third day. I just do an average and I'm going to get a forecast of the final day that I want, which is the fourth year. Now, the weighted moving average is almost the same as the moving average, but the difference is that with this one, what we do is we that we have a weight, and that weight is based on experience also and intuition. So in this case, we're not going to tell you going further with how we find the weight and all those things because it's out of your scope. So just know that will be given a weight and you'll assign that weight to the most recent period. And when it comes to exponential smoothing, this one, it, it involves a bit more of calculation. But the calculation that you're going to do, you're going to use a specific formula, saying that to get a forecast of one day using the exponential smoothing method, what we do is like we have uh, the forecast that we did for the previous day, which can be yesterday, plus a smoothing constant, which is most of the time is going to range between zero and one. Also for this one, it's not something that is in your scope. So just going to be given this value and it will always range between zero and one and you multiply by the demand that you got yesterday minus uh, what you forecast. So all of these methods, we are going to apply them in the exercises that we'll be doing. But finally, we have what we call uh, measuring forecast. So in this case, what we do is to measure our forecast here, as I said before, sometimes you can forecast like I will sell according to what I sold yesterday. Today I will sell 500 units. But then something happened. Uh, somehow for a reason that we don't know, you get 600 items that are sold. So a forecast here is going to be the 600 that you sold 
minus the forecast the 500 which, which is going to give you 100 so that one is an error saying that i forecast this and i saw this what is the difference between them so uh, a forecast becomes more accurate when that error is small and is little let's just say i forecasted 500 units that i'm gonna sell and it happened that i sold 505 this forecast will be more accurate because it's only five then another forecast where i forecast 500 and i sold 600 which is 100 you see that that one is a bit it's less accurate now the method that you're going to use to solve this kind of uh to find the the forecast error is the mad which is the uh, the the sum of all your forecast error for each and every period and we divide by the number of period that you have and after we have the MSE, which is also the same as the MAD, but in this case, we just take the forecast error, which is squared, and we divide by the number of uh, observation or period that we have so far. So this is all when it comes to the theory. And what I want us to do so far, I want us to do an exercise. And the exercise that we'll be doing is exercise 4.1. As I said last time, I was still using, I'm still using the 9th edition of my, my book while you guys have the 11th or 12th. So check in your book according to the data that I given. It might be 4.2, 4.3. 4.3. So this exercise here, yeah, it's about an hospital that is considering to purchase new, a new ambulance. So what they do is like, they say that the decision will rest part, uh, partly on the anticipated mileage to be driven next year. So the miles driven during the past five years are followed. So what we have so far here is not forecast, is what happened. So it's not something that we forecast, it is something that uh, really happened. Now, the question is, they want, first of all, they want us to know uh, the mileage for the next year, actually between bracket the sixth year, using a two year moving average. So in this case, the method that you are using is a moving average. As I said, you're not going to, to consider the naive approach so far because it's easy. You're going to do only the, the moving average, the weighted moving average and the exponential moving. So when it comes to the first question, they're asking, they want, they want to know um, the, a, a two-year a two moving average. So what we do in this case we know that according to what we have so far when it comes to the data that we have we are only going to start from from the third year because from the for the first year we don't have the previous how can i say the previous demand or the previous value of the year before the first one because it's starting already on the first year and on the second year if we need to do it we'll need only one value which is for the first year so since they're asking us for two moving average, uh, we must start with the third year so that we have the second and the third, which are the two years before. So what we do is like our forecast, uh, a two year moving average, we're going to start from, we're going to start from the third year, as I said. So from here, what we do is we know that, um, sorry, so we from here we know that our third year the forecast uh, the forecast will be because if we need to solve for the sixth year we need to start first of all the third the fourth the fifth and the sixth which is going which is what they're asking us to find so in this case we start first of all by summing what we got for our three year, our, our first year which is three thousand plus what we had for our second year four thousand and we divide everything by the number of period observed. We only have two periods observed, which is the first and the second. That means we divide by two here. So we're going to get something like 7,000. And the 7,000 that we get, we divide it by two, which gives us uh, 3.5, which is 3,500. Remember here we're working with mileage. So when it comes to the, say, to the fourth year, we do the same. So, but in this case, we're going to take the, the two more recent periods to what we have. So the more recent period to the fourth year is the third and the second. So we take the 4,000 for the second plus the 3.4 for the third and we divide by two again. So we have 4,000 plus 3.4, which give us 7,000. 
and 400 and we divide by 2 we have 3700 so when it comes to the fifth uh, year what we do is still the same we take the two more recent period uh, to the fifth one which is the third and the fourth so we'll have the 3.4 plus the 3.8 that we divide by 2 again so in this case it's uh, 3400 plus 3800 divided by 2 it gives us 3600 and what we do from here again uh, now for the last year which is now the sixth year that we are, lo we are looking for for us to work it we need to find uh we take again the the two more recent period which is the 3.8 plus the 3.7 and we divide by two and the value that we get is 3.8 plus 3.7 uh, and we divide by two we have 3750 this is the value of the forecast that we have so far so from now what we're going to do is like we say that for our how can we say for the sixth year the forecast will be of uh will be a 3750 miles that will be driven so in short this is all about this first part so just to make our video short we're going to do like this the second video will be about uh what is another, the, 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 the other question is about the MAD based on a second year. So this is what you're going to do on, on, in our second video. So far, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this first part and you'll be waiting for the second part. Thank you.